Today I'm going to show you how to connect electrical components on this Craftsman Rider engine swap. This is a Craftsman DLT 2000 and what we're swapping is a Cola Pro 20 V-twin engine with a Harbor Freight Predator 708cc engine. A little backstory. The previous owner said that the Cola engine blew on him so he went out and bought this Predator engine. He paid a technician, and he paid him a couple hundred dollars, to install this engine. He said everything fit just right, and they thought it wouldn't be any problem. Well, when they went to start it, they had an issue getting it going. He said they did get the engine to run, but they couldn't get it to run right. That's how I ended up with it. When I got it home, the battery was dead. I gave it a little bit of a charge, put the battery back in. When I connected the battery, this engine turned over. I said, what's going on? The key was off, everything was off. How'd this engine turn over? Well, come to find out, the tech connected the starter directly to the battery. I said, what's going on? So I thought, well, maybe the relay was bad and they just bypassed the relay to see if the engine would start and how it would run and just never got back to installing the relay. Well, I looked all over to see where the relay may be. I couldn't find anything, even a short wire that would go from the uh, relay to the starter or the relay to the battery. Just this one wire. So what's going on? Then I thought about it. On cars from, oh, I don't recall what year, they started installing starters with the relays connected to them. And I thought to myself, I wonder if Cola has the same setup. I went online looking to replace a Cola starter. Some of them were like this, typical. And others had the starter relay mounted to them. Uh-huh, that's what it may be. I have several Craftsman in my boneyard. Check them out, and sure enough, what did I find? I found a Craftsman Rider with a Kohler engine. Let me show you what that looks like. Here's the starter. There's the solenoid that's connected to the starter. We have the hot wire from the battery connected right to the solenoid, and the wire from the switch. Now I know that I need a relay. Here's one of the benefits of having a boneyard. Parts are easily available. I pulled this starter relay off uh, John Deere and I checked it out. This relay works. So I have the relay. We know what has to be done over here. The next step is to see what functions control what wires. Now in the previous video, this is up above, I showed how to remove the starter switch. And the reason I removed it, I wanted to check one, the switch to see if it was any good. Two, I just check the continuity between these Ys to see where they went. And after about a half hour, 40 minutes of frustration, I gave up on that. Well, I'm back out here today, and the way I'm going to approach it is to install the battery or a jumper pack, energize the system, and when I turn the key switch, we will find out which wire the power is going to. I don't have a diagram for this Craftsman tractor. But I do have a diagram for this Predator engine. And what I did over here was to make this to make the schematic a little larger. Let's see if you could so the camera could pick it up. Here's the wire terminal. And we have six positions. There's one in the middle. This one here is a blue wire, and it's for the low oil pressure switch. Next to it. We have a stop engine, that's a black wire. Then we have this one over here, the carburetor solenoid switch. It's a yellow wire. And then note, the yellow wire, when I follow the schematic, the yellow turns to red at the solenoid, for the starter solenoid. The bottom two are positive. I'm pretty sure one goes to the battery. I don't know where the other one goes, we'll find out. But I know one goes to the battery. The other one might be for the uh, accessories keep the accessories running I'm not hundred percent sure so my next step is to energize the unit trace the wires once I have that done I'll be back to show you what we have I've been playing around with this for a little over a half hour now let me show you what I found so far when you're connecting the power source I'm using this jumper pack here because that battery just wasn't holding the charge I hooked up the ground to the ground and for the track that to receive power, I hooked up the starter solenoid. I put a ground wire to the starter solenoid to the, to the engine. Then I hooked up a probe light 
you're going to need one of these if you're testing it yourself probe light to a ground then i check the wires this is how the power gets back up to the switch through this wire here see that it comes off the wire that would normally go to the starter i end up breaking this wire over here playing around with it too much it came out this will be hooked up a little differently you'll see how i hook this up when it's done and these pins i tried getting them out i tried everything i even tried using uh, the inside of a big pen i tried using because i've done it this way before but for some reason i can't get these out this is just a stapler that i opened up i had two of them one fell down below Try prying in between so you could pull it out. I couldn't get these out. A couple of different ways you could go about this. One, you could buy one of these two tools up above. One's a little pricey. One's not that bad. If you feel you're never going to be using those tools again, and you don't want to lay out the funds for that, a couple of ways you can go. One, you cut these wires and buy the ends, a male end and a female end that plug into each other. That'd probably be the least expensive way and easier to hook them up. Or two, if you have a boneyard, you could do what I'm going to do now. I cut out these connectors from that craftsman I told you about earlier. And I'm going to plug them in, one to the engine, one to the tractor, and hook up the wires according to the schematic that I have from the Predator engine. As far as the wires on this engine, this is from the tractor. Found the white wire is for the starter. The black wire is a ground. When the engine is off, it goes to a ground position. And that would be hooked up to the uh, magneto so it could short it out and shut the engine off. Now, there's a red and green wire together coming out of the engine. It's a ground when it's in the off position. And there's power when it's on the on position and the off position. I can't figure that part out. The orange, I don't know where it goes. I thought maybe it was for the clutch. I tried reading it a couple different ways. One, with the power on, with the, with the light. Two, with the power off and for continuity. I pulled up the clutch switch for the mower deck. That didn't do anything. And the red has power on until the engine is off. So now I'm going to hook these up, make my splices. And once that's done, I'll be back to show you whether it's going to work or not. I was having a difficult time having the terminals plug into one another and staying in place. What I finally did was to free up the wires that were inside the terminal and plug them into this terminal. I thought I had it all set up, but when I turned the key, nothing happened. If you look back at the starter that was on the cola, you can see that it had this setup. And you also had this wire going up to the battery. They had the wire coming to the starter to get it going on the cola this wire was connected directly to the battery which charged the switch on this one when it doesn't charge the switch because you can't have a continuous feed to the starter otherwise the starter would keep going so what i'm going to do now is to cut this wire splice a wire to it bring it up to the starter relay on the hot side of the starter relay that comes from the battery. Or I could do it right to the battery itself, either way. And then I'll have power to the switch. Then I have to come back and reconfigure the wires from the tractor back into the harness for the engine. Once I have this done, I'll be back to see whether I'm on track or not. I have the tractor off the trailer. And let's see what we have here now. Let's start it up.
Well, this is a big plus. We have the engine connected to the switch. It starts with the switch, it runs with the switch, it turns off with the switch. The clutch works, forward and reverse work. This actually has cruise control. I didn't check that in the short run. So this is a big plus for me. It took me a couple of days working on this, but this was well worth it. The only significant damage on this unit that I see is the hood. And I may come across another hood, but this times I run these without the hoods on them anyway. And a couple more tips before we end this video. One, this unit has a low fuel shutoff, which I didn't connect. Whether you have this low fuel shutoff solenoid or not, always check your oil. This may not shut your engine down because you have enough fuel in it. But on the other hand, you may have too much fluid in your crankcase. I've seen where the needle valve, like glass flow into the carburetor, where the anti-backfire solenoid wasn't working, gas flowed into the carburetor. If the exhaust valve is open, gas will go into the head, down the valve, and into the crankcase. When you open this up to check your oil, if it smells like gas or it's way more fluid in there than you had before, you have gas in your crankcase. Run of that engine, you'll blow your engine. That's the equivalent of mixing oil and gas in your crankcase. I've picked up a lot of machines that had blown engines, and that was the reason. Now, this has the gas tank in the back. My next big job on this is to pull this gas tank out or find a way to drain it, because this sat for, I think, eight years without being used. I don't know what's in this tank. That's why I was using this makeshift setup over here to get the engine running. I know there's nothing in here. I don't know what's in there. So this will be my next project. And also, if you have a tank that's under the seat like this, it's a good chance you're not going to have that situation that I mentioned. But it's not a bad idea to put one of these shutoff valves on your fuel line. If you have this kind of setup, a lot of machines have the tank on top over here, and it's gravity fed, it doesn't have a fuel pump, you definitely want one of these on there. Because the situation I mentioned before will destroy your engine. Nine to one, there isn't any fix in that. And that's my, that's my biggest tip. Get one of these valves and put them on. They're inexpensive, they're easy to put on, anybody could do it. Change your fuel filters from time to time. Keep your fuel filter clean, keep your air filter clean. Big deal on the air filter. If you're keeping your older machines because these new ones are what they are and you don't want to buy a new engine or buy a new machine, Clean that air filter, keep that dust from going in the engine and causing that friction and wearing it down. And don't forget to change your oil and filter. Keep track of how long you're running your engine and they'll last quite a long time. This is an old unit and they had to put this engine on because they blew the other one. Why it blew, I have no idea. I didn't get to see the old engine. But, but that's it. If you have any questions or comments, post them down below. I'll answer them as soon as possible. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like it does help and if you haven't done so already subscribe hit that Joe Z icon and not to miss my new videos as I upload them be sure to ring that bell until next time stay safe